Chief Karina, I see you brought a legend, uh, Mike Robertson, with you. Please give a warm <laughs> round of applause for Chief Karina Lewin, Cheslata Carrier Nation. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start, uh, first of all, by acknowledging that we're on the Tlaitlaitane traditional lands. And thank you, uh, Chief Dolly Abraham, for allowing us here. I'd also like to acknowledge the fellow leaders that are in the room and all of their community representatives. Natural resources is a piece that we can all work together to accomplish an environmentally sustainable project with the economic benefits that come with it, but we'll always pay attention to the land. The Tedichuk Archaeological Excavation Project is a good news story today, but there's a long history behind it. It's tales of grief, death, loss, and flood. But it is today towards the end and that's where we are and want it to be. It's about the collaboration, trust, and the relationship built with industry on a project that will benefit all of humanity. I'm proud today to be here with my respected elder, a mentor to me, Mr. John Caswell. John was born at Chislata, Chislata Lake prior to the flood and has uh, experienced all the hardships that came with that. I also want to acknowledge that I have my newly elected councillor, Janet Whitford, with us today from the Chislata Carey Nation. Janet, can you stand up? As we, only have a short, uh, as we only have a short period of time here today, I'd like to turn the mic over to our team that has come with us and the partners to explain the project that we're talking about. And I will also be available up on stage until the end of the presentation if anybody has any questions. Masicho and Aotza. Thanks, Chief Lewin. Um, and thanks very much, everyone, for attending today. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Clay Clay Tanay and thank them for allowing us to be here today. I've been coming to the Natural Resource Forum since 2006, and I think when we first started, we were meeting in little rooms upstairs, so it's come a long way. My name is Kevin Dobbin, and I support Rio Tinto in developing partnerships in BC. I've been with the company for 16 years now. This is my 16th year. Today, you're going to learn about a partnership that probably would not have happened 70, 50, even 20 years ago. While Rio Tinto has a goal to develop Indigenous relationships, it's not always easy. In fact, it can be difficult. But we have learned that getting to know people with time, building those relationships, and forming trust it will lead to a true, mutual, and beneficial relationship. And just so you know, it goes both ways. It's obviously very difficult for Indigenous communities to trust industry, and we understand that. So it does take time, it does take effort, and it does take that commitment to become good neighbours, good partners, and good friends. That's why we have community people working to support the business to build better relationships and work with communities where we operate. So everyone knows that relationships take time, effort and commitment to build trust to form good partnerships and that's what we're aiming to do. You're going to hear about an incredible project today and I'm really proud and excited to be here. I get goosebumps when we talk about it. It's very exciting. Most of you will know the relationship with the Chislada and Rio Tinto Carrier Nation have, uh, sorry, the Chislata Carry Nation in Rio Tinto has not always been easy and it's not where it was or is today. But I can say that evolution of the relationship was the result of the Chislata and Rio Tinto's commitment to build a relationship. This, of course, was led by Chief Charlie, who in 1999 said, enough is enough and we need to start working together. 
And Chief Lewin has carried that vision and continues to carry it today, and we're very glad to have her as a leader that we're working with. With that commitment came consistency. It was the people, and it was doing what you say you're going to do and to form that trust, which, as I said, is a critical component. I remember first coming to my uh, meeting with the Chislada in 2007, and Mike Robertson and Chief Lewin say, you only come when you want something. <laughs> You always have the same agenda, and we definitely had to change our approach. We had to come, be friends, and not always talk business. We had to listen, we had to understand to build that relationship. We ended up signing the Chislada New Day Agreement, which took us a bit of time to get there, but we got there, uh, February 27, 2020, something we're very proud of. And it's led to many opportunities that have allowed Chislada to grow and build capacity. So while partnerships and relationships aren't easy, we start, and we started at polar ends, it's about working together and how we come to the conclusion of forming that relationship. And the result, obviously, is the Tatatuck project as well. The Tatatuck project is important for the Shizlada, it's important for us, and it's important for humanity. It's a really exciting project and something that we're very glad to be a part of. Colleagues of mine have been to the site and they've seen amazing finds and work being done. They say it's, it, they feel like history is there. We're very humbled to know that First Nations people in the region lived there 4,000, 6,000, even 10,000 years ago. So we're very excited to be that initial partner to start up the project and secure it. And now I'm more than happy and proud to introduce Dana Eveschuk, who will introduce the Chislada team and share the story of the exciting project. I will mention before we leave why I'm carrying this paddle. <laughs> this was a paddle, and it was really a symbol of the agreement that we signed with the Chislada. It was the idea of the Chislada to have a good symbol, and the paddle has many meetings in Chislada. Um, everybody got a paddle, and we're paddling together. So that's why we are carrying the paddle, and it's an important symbol for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, I'm really proud to be here at the Natural Resource Forum. When I started working with Chislada in 1981, 42 years ago, this was an impossible venue back then. And it shows the evolution and the results of a lot of hard work in communities throughout British Columbia to make their voices known and become included in the industry, in the natural resource business that has caused some. Uh, damage to many, many communities. So kudos to the good people that put this thing on. I think we've been to each one of them for 20 years now. When, um, when Simon had trouble with his video, <clears throat> it made me smile because in the old days at Cheslada, Every time something went wrong, every time a vehicle broke down, any time we lost something, we would say, God damn, Alcan. <laughs> we blamed everything on Alcan. So today, sitting up here, it gives me a great deal of pride to be with John and Karina and the Chislada team and with our partners, Rio Tinto. We have somebody pushing a button, Digger? Okay. This uh, is the westerly headwaters of the Nechaco River. The Nechaco at one time was the largest tributary to the third biggest river in Canada, the Fraser. It was a series of lar seven large lake and river systems that joins the Fraser just across the bluffs here at Prince George, 192 miles away. The traditional territory of the Chislada has always encompassed this system, which now today is called the Nechaco Reservoir. 
The Cheslara had permanent villages throughout this territory, with the largest being at Tedachuk Lake. In 1838, smallpox came and decimated the Tedachuk villages, killing approximately 95% of the population at the time. Hundreds of people died. The survivors abandoned their area and moved to their other villages at Utsa and Chislata Lake. The original name of Tedachuk was for fat fish. I don't dare pronounce it. After they left, the survivors named it Tedachuk, which means sick water. Moving, oh, and the, the first non-native European settlers came to this country in 1905. So from that settler standpoint, it's a pretty fresh area. And <clears throat> the uh, BC government wanted to establish an aluminum industry in British Columbia. So they issued Alcan a water license in December 1950 for all of the water above the Grand Canyon of the Nechaco River. A dam immediately was commenced, and by October 1952, a little less than a year and a half later, the water was backed up and the flooding commenced. And the water that used to run east now ran west through a tunnel excavated in the coast mountains. The archaeology community became alarmed of the resources to be consumed by this massive reservoir. The reservoir itself flooded 140,000 acres, a surface of 570 square kilometers. This reservoir is 250 miles long. This slide is, a, is an overlay of the reservoir on the lower mainland that extends, as you see, from Vancouver Island almost to Hope. It's a very, very large system. The archaeology community became very concerned that so many resources would be lost, and they commissioned a a uh, expedition led by Dr. Charles Borden of UBC to come out here and quickly assess and document the human use and occupation of the land. As you see from this slide, the pre-flood landscape was dotted with areas of significant use and occupation of villages and campsites. These were all inundated within a couple weeks of the dam closure. When the archaeology team came upon these sites, they were astounded at the, what they called the unspeakable archaeological richness. And the UBC and Dr. Borden convinced Alcan at the time to contribute $5,000, which comprised 40% of this budget of the largest Archie expedition ever attempted in BC at the time. Dr. Borden described this area as a wishful dream come true for an archeologist. However, it was a um, it was a, f a faded expedition, and approximately 95% of all the archaeological resources were inundated by this project. Another story related to the flooding is the Cheslada system itself. Over the years, we go on reconnaissance regularly and find human remains, bones of ancestors, contemporary graves that were washed away, and ancient burial grounds 
that have dated 5,000 years old. It's a very significant archaeological record that Dana will go into later. Every time we find these human remains, Alcan is very, Rio Tinto is very responsive in helping in the recovery and the erosion control. The site at Tedachuk was actually exposed by the devastating wildfires in 2018 because we looked at, for that site and those sites for decades. So when we found them in 2018, we commissioned uh, some field work and an archaeological reconnaissance, and they confirmed this. We put together a budget, and in lightning speed, in a corporation time scale, Ivan Velos, the CEO of, of Rio Tinto Aluminum, actually came out here in person, met with the chief and council, and confirmed that they would sponsor this significant archaeological expedition. So again, that, that shows how things change, and we're proud to talk about this, and I'll turn it over to Dana to explain the archaeological value. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. In 2018, a large forest fire destroyed the area around Titichak Lake. And as a result, the trees and vegetation were destroyed along most of the shoreline of the lake. While extremely devastating, it did expose a large number of significant archaeological sites and has shown to prove that the Tislata Carrier Nation people occupied this area extensively since time immemorial. Some archaeological sites are potentially as old as 10 to 12,000 years. A typical standard archaeological investigation generally does not have funding available for intense research analysis. Therefore, while we as archaeologists know of many very important sites in BC, we do not know much about them. Rio Tinto has generously allowed us to utilize the best scientific methods available in order to analyze the remains and artifacts discovered and uncover detailed information that would not normally be attainable. Working together towards a common goal with mutual respect for each other has allowed this project to proceed quickly and without undue delays. The oldest and largest intentional burial grounds of ancient human remains in the interior of BC have been discovered in Chislada Carrier Nation territory. These remains have been radiocarbon dated to 5,000 years old. This is the oldest known intentional burial ground in BC that we know of. These remains were discovered eroding from a terrace adjacent to a body of water that continuously fluctuates drastically as a direct result of the reservoir. Emergency archaeological excavations have occurred here multiple times over many years in order to salvage the remains. But in the summer of 2022, Rio Tinto made enormous efforts to stabilize the bank and help curtail the exposure and loss of these sacred remains. Rio Tinto has taken the responsibility of protecting the ancestral remains that are still in the ground and is fixing the problem. Tislata Carrier Nation no longer has to worry about the unintentional exposure and loss of their ancestors in this particular area. Being proactive rather than reactive is extremely important in this partnership between Rio Tinto and Tislata Carrier Nation. With this partnership, Rio Tinto is committing to this new approach of cultural resource management and the preservation of archaeological sites. In 2021, extensive archaeological reconnaissance work was conducted at Titichuk Lake, and over 150 new archaeological sites were discovered. The archaeological richness of the area is unprecedented in BC's interior. 
This is the first time in 70 years since Dr. Charles Borden conducted his archaeological work on the reservoir's footprint that archaeological assessments have occurred to this extent in this area. Excavations started in 2022 and will resume this year and for many years to follow. While we can't speak to the details of the excavations publicly at this point, I can say that we have found extraordinary things and we are extremely excited about what else we will discover. In this slide, you can see just a few of the artifacts that we've uncovered and so far we're probably 30,000 artifacts. So extremely significant and extremely rich area. What we have learned so far is that is this area has been occupied by a large number of people for a very large time, or for, sorry, for a very long time. Significant resource procurement and trade was well established and travel through this area by many neighboring um, and even distant peoples was occurring extensively. The funding provided by Rio Tinto and to Chislata Carrier Nation to allow for extensive archaeological excavation is extremely rare. Partnerships between companies, corporations, and First Nations have increased in recent years, but should become the norm. A respectful and mutually beneficial partnership is paramount when living and working in the traditional territories of people who have occupied this time since time immemorial. This partnership between Rio Tinto and Chislata Carrier Nation is an excellent example of great social corporate responsibility. Everybody wins when we all work together. I'm going to give the mic back to Mike. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you um, to everybody on the panel today. Um, in closing, I just want to reiterate um, about the unique relationship that we have with industry and First Nations and how we can work together in keeping the communication gaps open. So it's all really important for us today to communicate that in 2023, this is a new day of doing business. For decades and decades, industry has had little obligation in protecting heritage resources on the landscape. And until recently, governments have not mandated that heritage pr protection be a priority in the consideration of resource development. Industry must acknowledge the footprint of their operations and some of the devastating permanent impacts they may, that many may have on the land and the water. Mitigation and compensation does not bring these things back. We hope this project encourages other similar par partnerships and becomes entrenched practice in resource development and the operations on the land. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to this presentation. It's near and dear to our heart. I tried getting Elder John to come up and say a word, few words, um, but he chose not to. So I just really appreciate again that he came with us today because he is the strength. He's the man that walked out of Chislata Carey Nation when we were evicted in 1952 with his family. And he's, he's been a, a real strength to us at the Chislata since. Um, so thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to this uh, really heartfelt presentation on the protection of the artifacts and the proof of our existence as First Nations people long before any of us were in this room. So Masicho, how it's up. I thought she did fantastic, right? Right. Uh, thank you, Chief and panel. Um, we're going to ask you to do a group photo. Uh, I would ask security to get the paddle out of Kevin's hands so he doesn't hurt anybody while we're having the photo. And then I've got some thank you gifts, and then we're going to ask you to go that way. Chief, are you good? Are you photogenic? Okay, good. Good. Let's have a group photo. Chief. 
chief and her friends and for first time BC Natural Resource Forum people, you see how we roll around here? Chief just gives us orders and we get it done. That's right. Okay, photo time.